So we'll see if we can polish a turd. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't call her that. She's a, she's a beauty. Oh, you got a test for me right here, bro. You yeah, a... dude. No, come on, bro. You've done Woo! this. How many, how many times have you done this? Yeah. There's the. Sweet. These are instructions. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, don't need that. <laughs> don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need We don't need this either, man. What? Come on, dude. So it looks like you have a 231J. Yep, it's possible. That's a good boy, right? All right. That's have you good. checked the chain? Make sure it's good in there and everything? I have, dude, I haven't checked anything, man. What you see is what you get. Dang. Let me show you what we're doing right now. Yeah. Dude, what's this real quick? Yeah, bro. Check it out, man. I brought that all the way from Folsom this weekend. That's what's up. So that's that. Uh, we did the Ultra Four race. We did the uh, the Metal Coke Stampede, and uh, it's a pretty badass race. It's a short course race, and it was muddy, bro. Muddy as could be, rocky. It was tough. So this this vehicle originally comes with a slip yoke type, and it just slides in there like that, right? But what it does, it's it makes for the angle of the driveline to be very severe, and it gives you dry line vibration. So what the guys with Advanced Adapters did is they came up with this nifty ass kit that you replace internals and you can add a yoke in the rear. So it's fixed. Right, so it's a fixed yoke and it gives you about two and a half inches of, of uh, shortness to bring it out here and you alleviate the angle. And also, they add a CV drive shaft. Check it out, bro. Yeah. So that cross cancels a couple of the angles in there. So it gives you a better driveline angle, you know what I mean? And yeah. it won't vibrate anymore. And, and then this, your slip is, is done in the drive shaft yes. instead of the tail shaft of the trans. So now your slip is here like a conventional drive shaft it's got the splines and then you can grease it up. Yep. Just, you know, a lot more heavier duty. It's pretty badass. We got the whole kit. So I got the drive shaft. I got the yoke that came off the 8.8. .8. So that way is all. I know we could have gone with uh, using a front one and this and that, but it's all heavy duty to where when it comes race day, we're going to bash. Yeah, when you want, when it comes down to driveline components, you want to put all new stuff in there. You don't want to put nothing you use or anything that's going to put you out of race. But you hate for a little $10, $20 piece to put you out of race, bro. You want to be in there and take that W. That's why we spent the money where it counts. Yeah, that's right. Bro. Yeah, that's why we don't got no money left. <laughs> <laughs> cool. cool, so I'll grab this back. Is there oil in this? Nope, I drained right, it for cool. you, dude. All so right, I, I can mean... grab this. I have a lot of practice this thing, and I can probably probably dump it down a little bit. Get a little oh, workout right oh, here. There you go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so, we'll see if we can polish a turd. <laughs> oh, don't call her that. She's a, she's a beauty. Bro. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop out the speedo. The speedo bear. So it's a 13 millimeter. Pop that bad boy out. And what I what I like to do is sometimes when I'm putting these back, I mark them. But since we're replacing the, the back housing on this, yep. we're not gonna mark it because we have a whole new housing, so it doesn't make any sense to mark it. Is that now you can you can clock that to adjust your speedo? Yeah, so this speedo is a clockable type. See, you see it's, it's not centered, it's eccentric. Yeah. So you could clock it and you could change it, the uh, speedo gear here, depending on the size of tires that you have. This is a 30, a 30 tooth. 32 Ooh, that's so probably like not, So check it out, so I'm taking the back off, we're gonna knock this little cone out. Oh. Not needed. $80 part. Whatever. <laughs> so you just basically spread those apart and then boom, it's a C yep. clip. So you C spread clip. those, it's bam. Like a little special little nifty, bam. You know, they're pretty those badass. Those are sick, those are sick. Those look like they're pretty custom, like they're custom. Oh yeah, no. Everything you can see those, those little everything trail holes custom, right bro. there. Everything here is custom. Oh, hell yeah. So pretty much if I did not do this, I would have made it probably over one bump. Bro, you would have knocked that drive shaft right off that. Crucial. Drive shaft be gone. Bam. So look, this, this is what we're replacing. Yep. So this is the back housing. We're replacing it with the fixed yoke, yoke style with a seal and a baron and a retainer in there. Yep. So, bam, check that one too. <laughs> oh yeah, that one's probably more expensive, huh? Yeah. Oh, see, you don't want to throw the good shit. <laughs> so as you can see, I like collecting Jeep parts. They kept me busy for you, you know what I mean? Oh, let me get this. Can you grab an extension for me, Marty? Little 3-8 drive. All right. Oops. So we got a little extension here. It's beautiful. Oh. So, this, so this is my operating table right here. So this Chaffer's gate is going under the knife right now. Yeah. So we're going to tear his guts out right now. 
I've actually never opened one of these up, so this is the first time. So as you guys, are, the viewers are learning, I'm for myself. I wanted to do this by myself at the shop, but having the right tools is always a crucial thing. And not only that, having someone with years of experience is not a bad thing to do. Sometimes you gotta swallow your pride a little and, and have it done right the first time, or you're gonna come back and uh, wish you did, but do it right the first time. So this traffic piece has these little notches right here on the side. You can stick a flat screwdriver in there and bam, you separate it, boom. Get the back one, separate it, bam, come out. So, you ready to see the internals of this? Let's do it. What she right. got? What she got? Let's see what we got in here. Let's Ooh, see how. She looks clean. Let's see what kind of shape it's in here. She looks clean. Cool. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. That's a badass chain. That's, it's chain driven. Yeah. Chain driven. That's trick. That's the trick. first thing that I like to look at when I do open these transfer cases is it has a it has a little oil pump right here, right? So this is a little oil pump, and then this is the pickup right here. So yeah. all the crud and anything that's inside the transfer case is gonna get collected right there. So Looks we're gonna so we're gonna check out and see what's under there. See how clean it is. Wow, pretty clean. Look, I'll take that. Dude, all day. this thing is badass. Very yeah. good shape. So that tells me how, what kind of shape the Michael transfer case. Michael Cox, what's up, dog? Oh. So it tells me that this transfer case is. Hasn't, clean, seen, man. hasn't seen some nope. abuse yet. Nope, I think the only yet. probably drove in two-wheel drive. Oh yeah, for sure. So that thing, you know, very little stuff in there. Little yeah. piece of aluminum. Nothing in there, right? In order to get this off, you had to take the front drive shaft off. And uh, as you can see here, this one was fine, but these other three stripped out when I was trying to take it off and I had to grind those out in a really uncomfortable spot with uh, a couple of different tools of my own. So that was my, that was what I got. Yeah, to those, those are with. super hard to get out of there. They're, they have the little, this like metric little bolt in there, it's a quarter yep. inch drive. It's super hard to get in. If you strip them, you're you're screwed, and you have to grind it just how you did, bro. So yeah, sorry about that, bro. All good, man. So look, so this is our new yoke here. So if you can tell the difference between the spline, this guy's a, a 32 spline in the rear, and this one that thing has a 27 up front. But the, much bigger. It's a lot. It's the same 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 type of yoke, except it's the same type of CV. Yeah. So you could you could run. You could essentially run a front drive shaft in the rear, which some people have done, right? Yeah, for, so Cherokee, some Cherokees, you can run the, the yeah. front one in the rear, depending on the length of the vehicle and the height of the vehicle. So cool. you might get lucky, you know, if you're stranded somewhere, Sounds you, you need a, front, a rear drive shaft, you can always drop your front one and bam, Boom. slam it in there. I like it. Yeah. I like oh, it. Oh, so, so here we go. So here's another little nifty little thing they put in here. It's a little magnet. Kind of collects any metal debris, and it has very little debris in there i mean you can see minimal. the debris but minimal, what, the bro. big thing to look for on this is would be chunks, chunks. You don't this want is all fine powder basically yeah. that's collected correct this is normal wear it's yeah very very normal no chunks in there so that's good so like we'll it. clean this bad boy up and then we'll put it here so i got my spare right there <laughs> Dude, cool so here we go so we're gonna pop man. the main thing out bam just Whoa. like that all right she's the main drive front drive bam. Dude, we're Pop getting this, on this is getting freaking tech right here so i mean it's not it's, it's pretty out. basic but i mean for like the first person to ever do this neck, you know? yeah it's like mr t shit right there so for someone who's never done this you guys are getting to see this firsthand but uh if if i had this thing opened up and didn't watch this process i'd kind of be like don't fuck this up you know because it seems like it's easy to do yeah, man. Yeah. i've done this thing so many times i mean i've had customers brought their transfer case in the cardboard box with all the pieces and they're like, hey Albert, I tried for hours and I can't do this. Can you finish this up for me? I'm like, all right, yeah. Wham, bam, thank you, man. He's looking at me like, dude, hell yeah. Yeah. All right, let's, bet, let's bust so check this, this out. Man. So one, first thing I like to do is, is check for wear on here, right? So this is our drive gear. So you can tell that this car hasn't been in four wheel drive very long. Good. Like they don't abuse it or else you'll see the, the marks from the chain on these teeth right here good whether it's gri grip gripping you know so this yep. thing has been in two-wheel drive most of his life so that's perfect. why the transfer case is pretty clean so it's pretty awesome perfect so we know that like this chain that. this chain so if it didn't put it in four-wheel drive you know they didn't put it in four low stretched much so four low this thing didn't work you know that's where it gets more this most wear in four low so this thing is 
I think it's gonna be in great you shape. See how so. heavy the thing is. Yeah, too bad it wasn't platinum, bro. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Not today, man. I'm already dirty enough. <laughs> so we'll put all this stuff aside right here. So another thing that I like to check in these transfer cases is the shit forks. So these shit forks, when when they run, they, this transfer case, believe it or not, will run on no oil for a while. You won't even, can't even tell. Is you this, what oil is in here? So what these transfer cases use, they use ATF. In they them. use ATF, because I, I thought for sure that this was like a, um, a gear oil. Most of the times it's well, a gear oil, isn't it? Usually yeah, it's gear oil if it's gear driven. So gotcha. this transfer case is, is chain driven, and the reason they use automatic transmission fluid or some type of fluid that's real thing is that if you put gear oil, the orifice is too small to get in there. Ah. So they use something real thin to get in and get lubricate the whole system. Gotcha. So that's the reason for automatic transmission. See, I would have messed that up. Yeah. I would have totally put gear, gear oil. oil in this thing, not knowing the difference. Yeah. It's because of my negligence. I mean, I might have Googled it or something, or just been like, yo. Yeah, what kind of thing? <laughs> so one thing I like to check on these transfer cases is the pads. The shift fork, shift fork pads, and usually when when they're burnt up, it means they ran low on fluid at one period of time. So these look great, They'll top be and bottom. Or what, what They'll be worn, see? completely worn out. They'll be like completely shaved off on one side. But these are super great, be in great shape. Put them back in there. Whoa. So this this is driving here all the time, constantly. So imagine if it's rolling like this with no fluid, it's gonna get hot, it's gonna melt it. Yeah. So then you're gonna have no four wheel drive. It's gonna be popping out of gear. Okay. So this is in great shape. So we'll put this on the side right now. Another win, another win. Just yep. small victories, man. Small so this victories. is this is our, our low low range shifter fork, and the same thing, brother. Bam, good deal right here. Buttery. Look, it's so clean. Awesome. You ever the see him this clean? No. Uh, often. I've, sometimes I've seen him clean, real clean, but uh, this one's super clean. All the teeth here are, are pretty good shape, so you'll be good, bro. So now when I'm shifting this thing, am I? So if I want to go from like four high to four low to two wheel drive, is that something I can do while I'm rolling? Put it in neutral because it's a five speed. I can just pop, pop, pop. So this bang, part, this, part, this particular transfer case, it's, it's, it's a, it's a semi synchronized transfer case, so you can pop it in four wheel drive at any speed, any time, and four high only. Gotcha. Okay? And you can take it out of four wheel drive high at any speed. Anytime. To low, so two, two, wheel two wheel drive high. anytime. So you could be driving, cruising 30 miles per hour, just popping in four wheel drive, bam. Shit, You're in four wheel drive. You could take it out at the same speed, only stop or slow down or nothing. But to go to four low, you're gonna have to stop, bring it into four high, neutral, mm -hmm. then four low. Then you have to stop. And also to to get it out of low range, you're gonna have to slow down a little bit, stop, bam, pop it out. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, depending on this competition, that's gonna kind of be a factor. I'm not sure if you can do that with the Ford Explorer. You know, going two know. to hot four. That that uh, that transfer case is it's a pretty hard transfer case at Ford Explorer. So you know, this 231 transfer case, I have I have buddies that I race with, and um, they they race with this transfer case. You know, buddies up in the Rich Chris, um, Sean McNamara, these guys race at Cherokee, and they race they've been racing for seven years with the stock transfer case. That's so they're pretty pretty solid. Another small victory, Michael yeah. Cox. I hope you. Uh, Hope you know what's going on with that transfer case, you, buddy. Because we know, we know what we know. We know what we got. Up. Yeah. All right. So now it's time to Sweet. reassemble. So what we're gonna do we is take a couple clips off. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna remember we're gonna replace the shaft. Yeah. So we're replacing this shaft here. See that? Big boy. See Daddy's the difference? home. Yeah. Daddy's home. See the difference? Everything here is the same except the back. They integrated the the bolt-on type yoke in the back. My U joint used to be way back here, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you we're we're adding six inches plus. Yeah, at that's least. solid. At least solid. So if you if you get a shorter drive out the transfer case, that means you got a longer drive shaft. That means you have a less of an angle. Yep. On the drive line, so yep. less binding. Cool. So that works. Let's so slap this girl in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this out here. This is where it gets a little technical with some people, but it's pretty pretty great. These snap rings are really, really tough. They're made out of a high carbon steel that are super hard to get out, but we got this one. Yeah. See that? See the little, the little dents in that little thing here? Yeah. That's where it goes. Bam. Centering tools, man. Pretty badass. Centering tool. If not, this thing will fly out and we'll never find it. Oh, man. You so know this is what we're going to do. Bam. It. We'll pop this sucker out. Bam. Here we go. Okay. Cool. So there's another thing we got to do here, okay? Notice the difference in thickness of the shaft here? Yes. Right. Yes, sir. So, believe it or not, you got to pop these 
quarantine bearings out of there. Oh, so it's shit. not going to run with bearings anymore. It's going to run a straight shaft, which is not needed because it's well lubricated. So we're going to press these bad boys out and then run it straight in there because you can't fit this in here. Look. It doesn't yeah. fit. No right. dice, Padre. So we're going to pop those out. So we'll go to our 75 ton press over here and press those bad boys out right now and see what we got. Mm. Yeah, that's old school right there. That's OG. What year is that made? That was made in 1971. Man, they don't make they don't make shit like that no more, dude. We're just gonna get this little bearing splitter. Where is it at? It's buried down here somewhere. Oh, see what I mean? Man knows where everything's at. Bam! Little bearing splitter. Please. So now we need something to push those down. We should have something here to the size of this one. So with bearings and just like doing shocks and whatnot, you need all these different small attachments. And as you can see, he's collected pretty much 50 to uh, 70 different attachments down here for every different situation and every different bearing or whatever you call whatever you need every, there. Every, I mean everything is different you can use an old bearing race you can use an old shock sleeve or something and it push bearings out you know what I mean you yeah. can I mean it, not everything is trash you know I like saving a lot of stuff and we can use it man we need that right thing that fits right in perfect and it works yeah so Want me to hold anything? You need yeah, to that thing is right there itself. Press up. Let me see how far it can go. Don't pinch your finger, dog. Yeah, man. I'm a true professional <laughs> right here, brother. See, I got all my fingers. Yeah. Still. I've almost lost mine like several times just in this last build. But you know what? So you can see what we're doing is we're pushing these out. We're using this. This is a Miller special tool, pushing that out. So now we're going to make some space to, to bring them out here. It doesn't take that much force to push them out, so we're gonna put it right on the uh, on the flange here on the side. So we're good. Um, Add the zip up right in there. Stack them. Now he doesn't use that very much force, but it's always easy to press them out than to bang them out. Yep. You bang them out. Here's one. Yep. Bam, one's out. Yeah, really good. Nah, you can this. This on the whole shaft for you, bro. Yep. Boom. And that, that didn't have too gnarly of tolerance. So basically, what you're saying is we're we're taking this bearing off and we're just riding the gear straight on the new right shaft. Right on. So straight on the new shaft. So check this out. So so that's how that's how you used to roll, just like that. Yep. And the engineers figured out that it didn't need this bearings anymore. So nope. we're gonna run a straight no bearings. Man, just like that, look at that. Shit. Crazy. Uh, Trick, huh? I like it. Oh. Let's throw a couple of things back here. I know you like throwing all this shit, but you know what I'm doing for you, bro? I'm putting it all nice and neat. Right on. I'm donating this to the shop, bro. I need a parts made over here. I'm gonna have to hire Blake. Come out here and hook up all my differentials right there. So what I did, check it out. So I, I popped that gear back in there. Yep. Pop this hub back in here. Now I'm put that back, that snap ring back in there. So is that spring loaded down or? Oh yeah, you can see. Never mind. You can see that. There she goes. There she goes. Bam. 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 Right in there. Now, do you ever take like a flathead and kind of tap around it to make sure it's all the way in? You know what? Sometimes you can you can really look at the, the ring if it's spread open you can tell if it's okay. not in there you can look around it and see and if there's sometimes a, if yep. you can wiggle it around it's in there nice and tight or you can just tap it down and once it pops you know what's in there yeah okay cool because so. yeah I know sometimes with certain things that are more press fit this is obviously just nice slip on but press fit stuff if it's not all the way down sometimes you got to tap them in and then sometimes these these clips on different things with that I've dealt with have like a radius edge and a sharp edge. Sharp edge always up, so it has that rigidity, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes they need it there for, for clearances for the other gear to stack right on top of it so you could 
you know, you can accidentally put it in the wrong way, you know, or grind the gear in or something like that. So you got to make sure you put it in exactly the same way you took it out. So now, do these do these matter with relativity to anything so, below? So this this type of uh, transfer case, some older transfer cases, they used to have dog stops right here. Yeah. They used to have a brass synchro right here. Okay. So they went away with that. I don't know why, but they just figured it was not needed. It was too much engineering for just a uh, uh, in and out. Yep. So they went away with the bearings and went away with the dog stops here and the, the brass synchro. So it doesn't need a synchro. Cool. Right there. So gotcha. Basically. So so basically alignment of, of those two gears is, is no big deal. No big deal. I like it. So I'm pop this bad boy back I like in it. Here. So that's something you can't really mess up, which is good. I'm sure I could have found a way. So we're putting this shifter selectors back in here. And sometimes it's good to put it in two-wheel drive, which is there, or four-wheel drive, just to, to make sure you get that clearance that you need when you're putting the shifter forks back in there. That falls right into place. Boom, there you go. So it's ready to pop in. So what we're gonna do now is, I like to clean this old, uh, RTV off of it. Yep. Right before uh, we assemble it. Get it clean, get both up. surfaces clean, and then and then go brake cleaner. Uh, do you Let me use my my Danny tooth first? There you go, guys. <laughs> well, that's Blake. Sorry, that's Blake's toothbrush. I mean, I got Dracula teeth, bro. Oh. These things. Yeah. It's a Jeep thing. Yep. I've been practicing my wave for when I'm driving this thing, dude. What, what is there such, what is the Jeep wave, dude? You got a Jeep wave? Jeep wave? Yeah. Fuck, I don't know what the Jeep wave is. I thought it was like a Yeah. 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 That's, 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 that's a hammerhead. That's a Jeep howl. That's yeah. A howl that's, that's when you know you made it over something sketchy yeah, and your you boys know. are like, damn, damn dog, that, that, that was yeah. you. <laughs> 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 oh so, man, if you're watching this, you guys probably think we're fucking coots. <laughs> That's cool. Great. Uh, I accept it. I'm gonna just wash it down a little bit. Get that thing hosed down. Hose her up. Just get it down a little bit in there. Make sure whatever's in there just leaves the test for case you don't need I'm gonna give her another little squirt yeah, squirt. Get out of there, girl. Get yeah. your shit out. I think we're good, dude. Oops. Whatever's in there, we'll leave it for the... Yeah. It wasn't that bad anyways. It wasn't great. Damn, what's this chain for, bro? This is the real Mr. T chain right dude, here. Dude, that bro. chain right there is for a, uh, like an old school wagon wheel. Okay. Like Back 19, in the day, that's yeah, when they that, overbuilt everything. Yep, that's a 1976 Wagoneer transfer case change. So you can different. see the engineering has, has changed significantly. Just, everything used to be raw, dude, just like your press, man. Yeah. All right, let's button this thing, dude. Let's do, let's do this. I'm excited. Cool, so now we have our, got that set up there. We're gonna grab our main shot here. Do you remember how this came out, Blake? Oh, yeah. I'm testing you, this is a test. Yeah, you fat side this down. Way, this way. That side, because this right. is where the nut goes on. Right on. For yeah. the yoke, bro. Right. I might look stupid, but I ain't dumb, <laughs> homie. Right? That's what yeah. my mama said. So well, I'm, gonna have you, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hand you your, your toothbrush back. Yep, I'm gonna clean this side. Clean that sucker up a little bit. Yep. Give me that thing. Teeth are dirty. Yeah. Teeth are dirty. So what we're gonna do is we're setting this thing back up here. Just say so it came out. Come on, get in there. So it doesn't really matter where you put it in because there's no location for the chain, it just goes around. So not a big deal. Bam. So we got this. Going back right in there. Bam. Bam. Just like that. Ready to go. <coughs> Magnet. Boom. Can you find some silicone? Somewhere? Yeah, why don't we do your race, bro? I had a, a guy that works with me and then my niece 
and my, my wife and my kids. We took a drive out there. That's tight. Family affair. Yeah, bro. heck yeah, bro. The whole family, family, family affair right there. That's what's up. That's that's racing at its finest. When your family gets to participate with you, bro. Yeah. My, my family are my number one fans, brother. My little girls. Amen. You know when Oh, he, dude, you know what? Matter of fact, I run my I won my race this weekend too, dog. Really? Saturday night. Yeah. Oh, right on, bro. Hell yeah, <laughs> dude. Hell yeah. That one was dedicated to Grandma, bro. Right on, brother. Congrats on that. I think every Is race. that up in San Diego? Yeah, the Del Mar Fair. Yes. See that? It's bare. Um, all the old silicone's off. You can see the swirls if you if you look close enough. You can see kind of the machining right there. This isn't a really fine machining process, so if you don't put silicone, this thing will leak like a mother. Do these bearings go bad often, or? Nah, I've never replaced those. Really? Ever. Ever. That's some good quality American engineering, then, huh? Yeah, it's pretty solid. Right there, bro. It's a huge shaft. Bro. America. Yeah. I mean, from the outside, this thing looked just destroyed. That's the turd. Like a turd, he says. But well, we polish her up. Inside out. That's why you can't be. Uh, you can't always judge a book by its cover, man. So this is going to be our gasket. This is what's going to seal the two together, and uh, hopefully not have any leaks. So I hired a make so make Yes, sir, dog. Coming in hot, bro. Come on, Blake, you're waiting for us out there, man. We're coming in hot. We're, we're making it race day. You watch. This is the real deal shit out here. So what we're doing now is just spreading it thin, making sure it's sticking to the case itself. Uh, usually, a trick with RTV is usually you're supposed to let it dry for a small period of time. And then after that, uh, that's when you would actually make the seal because it becomes a little rubberized before you you smash both both cases together. So, little fun fact: I never really have the patience to do that, but uh, today we we might probably not. But <laughs> after spreading it, I'm gonna take the excess on the inside and just wipe her off, just because. Uh, I'd rather not have that sandwich into the case, and um, yeah, but I think uh, I think we're looking good. I think we're ready. It's looking looking good. I think we're ready, man. So ready for that that last piece of the puzzle, and I'll show you how to pop that in right now. But we have to obviously this goes on. Yep. I'll mm -hmm. show you how to do I'm, that. I'm, I'm, I think it goes on this side, right? There you go. Pop that back right there. Yeah. Boom. Have a little O-ring in there. For sure. Bam, see it? Oh. Cool. Yeah, cool. yeah. I watched I watched you take this thing apart, dude. Yeah. Hold that bad boy in there. There you go. Yeah. Bring it in, make sure it slides in there. Yep. There you go. Daddy, right on. There she is. Yeah. Okay. Come to easy, daddy. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, we got this. Hold on one sec. We got this right here. This fell down. Okay, pop that bad boy in there. Mm -hmm. Back in there. There you go, looks like it's sliding right in. Top here, top there. <laughs> and then again. Donkey Kong, right? A little bit harder than Donkey Kong. Easy to tap on. Shit. Okay, we got dude. Violent, man. Cool, so you can pop the main ones in here. Snap ring again, correct? Yeah, I'll show you this. That. Oh, yeah. These are the main ones here. It's got these. It's got two main ones, the long ones with the washer. Okay. The dowels are in the corner. Yeah, yeah. Boom. Boom. There you go. I like, to, I like to secure these first, just to be on the safe side. So while you're doing the rest, yeah, you can do the rest. You so now you, you just barely run them home with this, correct? Yeah, just barely run them in there and Ready to rock and roll. Cool, cool. So we got that in there. Make sure it stays good. It's right on. 
So now we got the rest of the parts in here. So now how come it doesn't? Because it's remember you have to. It has to be pushed this way. Oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. Because of the, the yep. snap ring right here. Yeah. So, so now do I put this snap in first? So well, I'll show you right now. This one snap is in here. Gotcha. So this is this is our new speedo gear. Right new speedo gear. Yep. Bingo. And then this is the yoke nut. Yeah. So these are the main ones right here. So we're gonna slide one in the bottom. Yep. Then you're gonna slide the speedo gear in and then bang and lock it. Top. Got you. So here are Got the you. Tools. Come on, get that girl home. So we got Blake over here helping us uh, field this transfer case for him. Oh. So we're doing an SYE kit from Advanced Adapters on 231J. And uh, we cleaned it up on the inside, checked it out. It had a pretty clean transfer case. Does it matter which way this goes? It doesn't matter. Okay. Just double checking. First time and you threw my instructions away. Yeah. <laughs> we're giving him some lessons on how to put this SYE kit in that 231J. And after this, he's going to be a professional. We're gonna be barking, baby. You yeah. should be charging everybody about three hundred dollars to do that. Easy, three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. What? Easy. What? Daddy don't got that kind of money. You got it in there? Yes, yes sir. So three now, three hundred burritos. Three hundred burritos. <laughs> gotcha. Or 30, thirty burritos if you ten dollar burritos. So now, looking at my orientation, this bad boy is gonna come on. Exactly. So now, yeah, exactly. What's up with this? So Does this have to be rotated? So we, you can take the cap off of there. Shit. She on there. She on there good. Uh, let's so size some, that. some transfer cases, we, we, we can we have to cut down that shaft. And maybe this one looks like we might have to cut. cut yeah. It. So what I like to do is see that. Yeah. So if it's in low range, it's gonna go down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this thing off here, and we're gonna see how far. It's, it's a tool will drive, and if not, we'll notch a piece off of it. Yeah, cut it off? Yeah, cut that sucker right off. Mm -hmm. Chop, chop. So let's uh, grab a tool for this. Cool. I'm going to put this silicone back on. These two surfaces come together. You'll watch the gasket ooze out. Hey, oh. yes, sir, you can see bro. it just kind of squirt out. That's what you want to see all the way around it because if there's not, if it's not coming out, then it's probably thin in that area and you might get a leak. Boom, boom, boom. We'll retorque all those by hand later, but uh, just get them, get them ran down and get them, get them started. So this one here had the longer one here. Yeah, got that long one right there. So let's put this on there. Let's test it and see if we have to yeah. chop that little shot now. So. So we're gonna check this bad boy, see if it needs to be cut down and see if it in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think we're in, we're in two wheel drive. All right, so we're in two wheel drive. And then it's gonna go, this is four wheel drive. I'll tell you. Oh, see how it goes up? Yep. All right, so we're gonna have to cut. That's two wheel drive. So that's the highest point right there, bam, that's the highest point it's ever going to reach. That's two wheel drive high, so we're going to have to measure this bad boy to see how much yep. we're going to have to cut off. You want it to be just at the bottom of those threads so yep, you can put... just the bottom of the threads. So now what's the what's the reason behind that nut that being there? That nut is uh, so you can actually see how far it goes up there. See? Gotcha. So okay. you can pop the nut off of it and then you can check it out and see where it's at. So that's a common so, thing, that's something that Very common. So we're going to do, we're going to cut it. Uh, we're gonna cut half an inch off the top first and check it, the clearance, and if it needs a little bit more, we'll go that other half inch. What happens if you go a little bit too far? If you go a little bit too far, then you're probably the shaft, when you shift it into four wheel drive low, it'll probably get stuck on the sleeve right here. Gotcha, so you wanna be above the sleeve so it's always through that, yeah. that. okay, cool. Well, let's cut it, man. So give gonna, me some, we're give, gonna me some grab a, give me some grinders, dude. Some I'm ready, I've been stuff. grinding all week. We're gonna get some, I'm fired up. We're gonna get some vicious tools right now. All right. We're gonna,
Golding or what? Like it, Drew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Up from the feet up. Okay, so we need to get the cap for this now. Do we need to move So let's go here to find the bridge here to make a little coming out from the gosh. Mm -hmm. So this, basically, once this gets tightened down, it stays there. Um, so we're putting a Speedo in next to accommodate the 35 inch tire that we're going to be running. So our speedometer is fairly accurate. We're going to go with a 34. 34, yeah. 34. 34. And then after that, the yoke goes on and oh, we're, we're done, oh. man. Boom, seal. That little pop seal. Boom, boom. Now, what about Loctite? Should I use Loctite on this guy? That nut has already Loctite. Boom. Yeah. Just like so. Where's the dad? Where's the big daddy for this driver? There she is. Um, yeah, I don't see any Loctite on this guy. Should. 